Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. This is episode 39 and I'm your host Jessica Lopez. We're proud to introduce our very first head-to-head -head shootout here on the show. We got Gran Turismo Prologue for the PlayStation 3 versus Forza 2 for the Xbox 360. The guys are going to be putting these two games head-to-head. -head. They've been playing them for a couple of months and by the end of today's show, you'll find out which one is to be considered the reigning champ. And during the shootout, the guys use the Ren Sport Wheel Stand by Fnatic and the Wheel Stand Pro. And on last episode, we didn't get to cover those in detail, so the guys will be giving you more information on those, as well as these Turtle Beach headphones called uh, the X4 headphones by Turtle Beach. We'll be letting you know a little bit about those as well. And if that's not enough, we got a Live for Speed report by Michael Passingham, and Darren's gonna be joining me for the top stories. All of that and more when we come back from this quick commercial break. This is Cole Little asking you to stop by the brand new SRT store. They have everything you could want as a sim racer right there in one place. They have wheels, pedals, shifters, and more. I'm talking about the latest sims, even Race Pro. Sim pods, video cards, they got it all. Just go to InsideSimRacing.tv, click on the store button, or on the banner. And the best thing of all is every purchase helps keep SRT on the air. So don't be a Dario Gangini. Go to the SRT store, get your gear, and be cool. Celebrity voice impersonated. All right, so I'm back here with Darren, joining me for the top stories as always. Hey, everybody. And before we get started on the top stories, I'd like to give a quick little mention that we've reached our millionth hit on One YouTube. One million. One million hits. Yeah, thanks everybody out there for supporting us and, and watching the show. And that's a big deal though. Yeah, us. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank our, our new and returning viewers. And speaking of viewers, I have to give a shout out to Ek from Finland for the great camera tips. Yeah, he sent me an email uh, saying that he would like to help us by uh, giving us some tips. And the tip was to use a filter when we're filming some LCD stuff and we're doing the console stuff. And, and uh, haven't got the filter yet, but we're going to get it soon. But wanted to thank you for the tip and we'll let you know when we get that filter. And speaking of shout outs. Oh, yeah, I wanted to get a shout out to the uh, MNRL guys from the TWAD series. Thursday World of Dirt, which was... That, yeah, is that what I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, that's, that's what it stands for. But uh, we're running the ORR2 trucks by Mad Cowie, and we ran Wheezy Mountain this last week. Wheezy Mountain. Wheezy from the Jeffersons. You guys Interesting. Remember that show? You guys yeah. remember the Jeffersons? Um. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so we ran Wheezy Mountain, and uh, Frosty St. Clair was friggin' dominant, man. He just... I, I couldn't keep up with him. But he won both races. We had two heat races, won both of them, and I had a lot of fun. Well, if anyone's interested in entering um, any of those series, go ahead and yeah. sign up. MNRLonline.com. And there's a few series they got running. The Thursday night, if you want to join us, Sean's going to be running it. Andrea, Terry, uh, are going to have a lot of fun. So uh, come out and join us. Yes, please do. And speaking of Frosty St. Clair, he has his show, Opinionation, yeah. which he hosts with... Um, John Prather. John Prather. They have a show called Opinionation. It's a very controversial show. Yeah, it is. And airs on Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, they had taken a little break. We had mentioned them uh, beginning of the year, but they took a little break, and now they're back. They've had interviews with Dale Jr., uh, Parker Kligerman. So, matter of fact, don't we have a little clip? We're gonna yeah, you, actually, you can catch it on PSR TV or ProSimRacing.com, mm -hmm. and we're going to give you a little clip of the show so you can see what it's all about. Previously on the Opinion Nation. Um, and you, you, in practice, you can just do it and see what happens. If you wreck, you know, you guys laugh and move on. Speaking of that, because I know you want to get to this points rant, and I want to get to that, <laughs> but um, do you consider what Jimmy Johnson did to uh, in the NASCAR Cup race to Hamlin this past weekend, would you have done that in practice or in the race? Uh, I probably wouldn't have done it because Netcode can't handle it. <laughs> yeah. right. Right <laughs> I mean, it's really, it's hard to do something like that. Actually, iRacing, you can actually kind of do it. It's something that you would never have done in NASCAR 2003. You can, you can kind of pull it off uh, in iRacing, uh, but man, it's hard. It's so easy to just hit somebody the wrong way and have them just be dead sideways and spin and stuff. If you'd like to catch Opinion Nation, remember it comes on Mondays at 10 p.m. Eastern, and you can listen to it at prosimracing.com or PSR TV. Yeah, it's a really cool show. I've been catching just about every episode and known John and Frosty for a long time, both on and off the track, and great guys, and really cool to listen to. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about uh, uh, some mods or the lack of the mod squad here on the show. We're not going to be doing that anymore. Uh, we decided to discontinue it for a number of reasons. We were getting flack for 
stuff not being scratch built. So only scratch built stuff on the show from now on. Yep, and we'll be talking about it. And speaking of which, we have a yeah, a we track. have a new track out of R Factor. It's Oren Park out of Australia, and the original track is actually going to be torn down. Yeah, sad to hear. I'm sure uh, Australians are uh, pretty upset about that. But yeah, they hosted a lot of races there, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna live on forever now uh, as a In laser sc yeah, yeah as a as a laser scanned R Factor track. And what a way to live on that. I mean, a laser scan is definitely the way to go. Yeah, it was laser scanned and GPS data all put into Bob's Track Builder. You can go on over to rfactorcentral.com to download it. And it was built by Brendan Pidewell, Brendan Elliott, and Chris Lamore. Yeah, if you guys are interested in checking it out, go to uh, rfactorcentral.com. And yeah, I, I checked it out. It's awesome. Drove the uh, PCC 2007 mod. Actually, with Andrea, we both uh, turned some laps on it and had a blast with it. Great, great model. Cool stuff. Over at No Grip, the Novatech racing team is having a little painting competition. They're giving away a G25, right, and some yeah, other prizes. It's a heck of a heck of a, a wheel there for a, for a prize. Gone over to NoGripRacing.com to enter. They're asking anyone and everyone to paint a Audi R8 R8 in their own team colors, and they will choose the winners. Yeah, Novatech will choose the winner and some cool prizes there. Cool stuff. And last up on today's top stories, we got some hardware news. The Carrera wheel, which we reviewed about a month ago on the show has been postponed due to the, the high demand of this wheel right yeah, here. Yeah, the G3, the GT3. Yeah, Fanatic just couldn't keep up. They're already sold out of this wheel for the first run, which is due in April. Second run's getting sold out, but they had to focus on this uh, before they went to that budget wheel. So all you budget racers out there that were looking for that six speed in the clutch for 130 bucks, gonna have to wait a little while or look for another option. But another, uh, some other news from Fnatic. They got some uh, new, uh, they're working on their new driver. We've got a, a beta version of it and add some new functionality to the display and rumble motors. So and as soon cool as that stuff. driver becomes available, we'll let you know. Hear about it on the show. Yes, we will. And that's gonna lead us into our head-to-head -head shootout. Yes, indeed. We got Big Gran one. Turismo Prologue versus Forza Two. Forza Two, yeah, this is a lot and of fun. And which would you say is the best? Yeah. I'm not telling right now. Well, I guess we'll have to watch to find out. Yeah, let's let's roll it. So we've done lots of reviews on the show. They're pretty straightforward. I mean, we, we've been doing them a while, but we decided it was time for that shootout. Put them head to head. A little more complicated though, huh? Definitely more complicated. And our, our first one's going to be on the console. Uh, two consoles, as a matter of fact. Forza 2 for the Xbox 360. And Gran Turismo Prologue for the uh, PlayStation 3. Yeah, and so speaking of shootouts, we got definitely more than one here. Like we just mentioned, PlayStation 3 versus the Xbox 360, Forza versus Gran Turismo. But we also got this stuff behind us. We got the Wheelstand Pro from wheelstandpro.com versus the Fnatic Rensport wheel stand. We even have different wheels we're using. We got the, the 911 and the G25. So what started out real simple, just two games or sims against each other, has really blossomed into something special. Super shootout, super <laughs> console shootout, super sim racing console shootout. Anyway, we're gonna ramble, we could ramble on forever about right. that. Let's get to the shootout, man. All right, how about you wanna just get right into it, go to physics? Let's do it, All right. let's definitely do it. I'll kind of start off with my thing. We're gonna try to carry it along since we're covering two, but you know, I play one and I think, oh, this is the better physics. Then I play the other and I thought, oh, wait, wait a minute, I'm too early. This is the better physics, going back and forth. But I gotta tell you, they're well, modeling, they're, well, they're modeling a lot of cars too. Yeah, Some, they like, are. I think you got in the uh, the GT uh, last night, the GT, uh, the Ford GT, the, the souped up one, the race version one, and it was tough to drive. It was yeah. kind of snap loose, but. Some, and this was in Gran Turismo, and then some of the cars felt a lot better. Yeah. You got in the Ferrari Absolutely. and you were the F40 and you loved driving. Absolutely. That thing. And I think on Forza that was the same way too. So, yeah, there scores were. Oh, by the way, we're going to go through this. Just like we normally do, we're going to cut a rapid fire. We're not going to go in depth. You guys have all, most of you, a lot of you have played or heard about this game. They've, they've been out forever. Forza since 2007. Gran Turismo Prologue close. And some may call it a beta, but we picked the two best from each console. Absolutely. For Forza, they slightly edged in this category for me. I gave Forza 85 and Gran Turismo an 80. 83 for Forza for me, 80 for Gran Turismo. And uh, they don't really rank up. Actually, pretty close uh, compared to some of the PC sims out there, uh, but uh, uh, definitely Forza got the uh, upper hand for, for, for me on this one. 
All right. Next up, what do we got? Graphics. 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 And and this is an area where I mean, in a nutshell, I think the consoles are winning the war. I mean, the, oh, no the graphics are superior. They're pushing the the monitors or TVs to a higher limit. And and in these two games, I mean, you have really good graphics on both. No doubt. So. Uh, Graphics for me, 98 for Gran Turismo 5. And I'm, well, why don't we go the higher number first and then the lower like for each score? I okay. like it. We're going out. We're just doing this as we go. <laughs> first here. shootout, guys. Yeah, uh, 98 for me for Gran Turismo and 88 for Forza. And I actually went 95 for Turismo and 88 for Forza. And I'm going to tell you why it was that lack of cockpit view. Yeah. And Forza 2 does not have in car cockpit view. And when I sim race, that's the view I use. So and right Gran there. Gran Turismo 5 is beautiful. I mean, the graphics on Gran Turismo yeah. 5 are second to none as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I mean, they set, for me, they set the bar. You know, we've always talked about uh, behind the scenes about bar setting. And this definitely sets the bar in graphics as far as racing sims go. So Absolutely. Again, 98 for me, 88, yeah. 95, and 88. 88, 88 so... Right. Next up, what do we got? Sound? Sound. In this scenario, I really didn't have a, I wasn't really, I mean, I was impressed with both, and I didn't see a big difference. Yeah, we weren't anywhere. blown away. No. I I, we liked the music on Forza 2. Yeah. Kind of weird on Gran Turismo at times. But some sleepy. cool songs. I, we liked that intro yeah. song. Anyway, with that, I gave Forza an 87 slightly edge mount with the better music, and an 86 for Gran Turismo. Forza, for me, all over sounds, 87. Uh, Gran Turismo, 78. All right. What do we got next? Presentation and ease of use. This is one of those categories that's a lot of things mixed in together. I mean, we talked about this earlier, and sounds kind of plays a, a part in it. I mean, some of the fun factor stuff. Uh, the presentation, I mean, the, the intro videos are a big part yeah, of it. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, at the same time, ease of use. Is it confusing and hard to use? And Replays. Uh, so that, that's, that's part of it, too. Yeah. And back to physics, something we didn't mention about Forza that was really cool, and it can be put into presentation the telemetry. Oh yeah, yeah. Man, the telemetry yeah. is cool on Forza. We, we found that late in our Forza running, and it is really cool. I mean, you can monitor yeah. what every tire's doing at any given time. Yeah, so you super techie guys, you're gonna see exactly what every corner is doing instantaneous while and it's back running. back to you PC sim racers, man, there's a lot of things you can tweak on these cars. Yeah. You know, to, uh, and watch the telemetry to see what happens when you make these tweaks, so. Yeah. These, these, these racers are getting a lot closer to the PC Sims than a lot of you guys out there might think. Yeah. So. And so for me, it was very close. I gave Forza a slight edge at 86 and Gran Turismo at 84. And there was a little yin and yang. I mean, there were some elements that each had in this category that, that brought their score up. Yeah, and I had 90 and 80, Forza taking the, uh, the tops for me there. So that goes to Fun Factor. This is my favorite category. Yeah, this is my favorite category. I don't think we had this early on and we added it later. Yeah, it might have been Grid that made us bring this one in. Or, or one of them. <laughs> yeah, one of them definitely. But uh, Fun Factor is a huge category and it, it means a lot to us. This is a hobby to us. You know, everybody, all of us want to be sim racing champions or, you know, a lot of us, I mean, me for one, both of us, Sean and I both want to drive real cars. We've been Absolutely. talking about building our own. Sean and I were working on my Camaro the other day and we want to build our own car. We want to we want to go racing on our own, but all of us do as, as sim racers. But it's it's all about fun. If you're not yeah. having fun doing this, then what the, the hell point? are you doing it for? Yeah, I absolutely. mean, why are you wasting your time with this? So, fun factor for me or for you? What do you got? Well, this is my biggest difference between the two. Forza was just fun. There's so much to do in Forza. Yeah. So Tuning. much going on. I yeah. love the tunability of the cars. And uh, with that, I gave it an 89, which is right up there with as good as anything's ever gotten, I think. And then Grand Turismo, unfortunately, only got a 75. I just, I wasn't that inspired. I mean, it's a fine sim. It just didn't, on that fun factor, it just didn't grip me the same. Exactly. It didn't wow me and, and keep bringing me back for more. It kind of was a chore to get some of those licenses. Um, where Forza, it's fun just kind of going through and building your car up and make, you know, getting it to the top of that license level uh, to see if you can whoop up on some of the other cars. Yeah. Uh, 90 for me, 75 for, uh, for, 90 for Forza, 75 for uh, Gran Turismo 5. All right. And sounds a little, sound, we're sounding a little uh, Forza heavy here, but it's actually, we get to the half point and it's pretty close and we'll, we'll uh, tell you about yeah, where actually, it's at. Yeah, actually, I think you have the average. And, and actually, fact, speaking of halfway point, yeah. we're right there, car models. Car models. So uh, car models, you know, they both have great car models uh, and a lot of cars. I preferred the selection of cars in Forza 2, and that, in the end, was the deciding factor. I mean, More it, race cars. Yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah, you know what? And this is going to go. Uh, this is going to be something I mentioned in my closing statements, but Gran Turismo Five to me is a driving simulator. Forza 2 is more of a racing simulator to me. There's a lot more racing elements involved in, in Forza 2, in my opinion. Gran Turismo, it's, you're, you're basically just driving a lot of stock cars. Yeah, you can tune them up a little bit, but you're not adding, like, intakes or exhaust right. or, uh, you know, suspension parts, you know, different brake parts, which is, I thought was fun. And some of you guys might think it's arcadey, but we were just talking about my Camaro, and... I've added intake. I've added exhaust to it. I've added a. Uh, I've flashed the computer, uh, you know, short throw shifter, gearing in the in the rear end, and all that stuff is in yeah. Forza too. Yeah, all of it. Speaking of it, we bought a Camaro, yeah. didn't we? Bought yeah, a we did. 2002 Camaro. We haven't built it up as much as yours, though. Right. No. <laughs> but that was one of the things I liked a lot, and, and that goes into car models. All right. Well, that takes us to the halfway point. I well, think you have some average scores at the halfway mark. Well, we here. didn't. We didn't give scores for car models. Well, then we can't average them without scores. No, and I didn't do the averages. We, I, we were, well, let's give scores for car models. All right, for car models, I gave Forza a 90, and Gran Turismo is right behind it at an 85. Yeah, beautiful car models on Gran Turismo. I mean, we, you guys might think we're doing this to bash Gran Turismo. There's a lot of great things about Gran Turismo. Um, but it's just not stacking up, to be honest, right here. Um, car models, 92 for Forza, 82 for Gran Turismo. So that leads us to the halfway here. Hope you guys enjoyed part one of the shootout. Stay tuned for the end of the show for part two. And during the shootout, the guys were using some products, the Ren Sport Wheel Stand by Fanatic, and the Wheel Stand Pro, as well as the X4 headphones by Turtle Beach. We got a little segment we put together just to give you a little more detail about these products. Check it out. So we were lucky enough to assemble some of the coolest products for sim racing for this whole shootout. And we actually had a, two different stands. This is the Wheel Stand Pro. They actually go by the name Wheel Stand Pro. And we also got to use the Fanatic Stand Pro, or a very similar design. We have a Ren Sport Wheel Stand. That's the name. Uh, very similar designs, but there are some unique features between each one that make them unique. Uh, you can see we have a G25 mounted up to the Wheel Stand Pro. The pedals are right here. There's a, a plate that actually goes to the bottom, so they hard mount onto it. I mean, we had no pedal slippage at all. Yeah, there's a plate. The G25 version comes with the uh, adapter plate, so you can hook up the six-speed shifter. Um, it's got the. Oh yeah, why don't you show them the, the yeah. bottom? There, since you've picked it up there, Sean. Sean there likes go. muscling it. There's the <laughs> there's the little plate we talked about with the wing nut. Goes right into the the stock G25 pedal mount, so there's already a a, a screw hole there for them. Yep. The other thing, it's not light. I mean, you can see it's taking quite a bit, but also I wanted you to get get an idea of the profile design. You know, this is something you can throw into your coat closet. So uh, you got the girlfriend coming over and you want to look Or a if the less wife gamer. doesn't want to see this, you know, yeah. want to see your gaming, your sim rig uh, sitting out. Uh, this could be used for PC uh, racing too. I mean, absolutely. you know, it, it's got a nice solid base for, uh, for the pedals, which I like. And that's one of the biggest gripes I always had when I first started sim racing was how do I secure my pedals? I used to yeah. put two by fours behind them, yeah. anything I could to keep them. Duct tape. Duct tape, anything to keep them sturdy, <laughs> Velcro. That's the new uh, thing for us is Velcro, but uh, yeah, the G25 hard mounts here too. Uh, it's got these cool quick releases. Love these quick releases, which allows you to adjust it at any angle. Um, you know, you can bring it towards you. You can have it straight up. So that's pretty cool. And then it's same thing as far as this telescoping up and down. I would have liked it to go a tad taller. Don't go too far. I think we're at the end right yeah, there. It's about to come out, but. I would have liked it to go on a, a tad higher, because uh, I am kind of tall sitting on a higher chair, but we used that AK rocker chair down low in it, and it was really cool. Yeah. Great for the, those type of uh, gaming chairs if you, if you have it sawed. Nice and low right there, man. It's, it's yeah. a cool setup. Actually, we tried both of these on a, a, what would have replaced a desk chair. We tried the couch chair. We tried the, the gaming chair. I mean, We it, tried it, everything, and really cool setup. Uh, retails for $179 plus shipping. Uh, that's the G25 version. Again, uh, they have varying prices, and you can get adaptions uh, for the Xbox and stuff to work on this. Uh, you can go to wheelstandpro.com. Comes with a cool set of uh, laminated instructions to get you through everything and some tools. Comes with all the tools and the hardware to mount everything, so you don't need anything. You're just plug and play. 10, 15 minutes, you're... Uh, you're racing. Yeah. We did have a little bit of wiggle out of this stand, but 
it never moved. The feet, I mean, did it ever move on us? No. Never. You, you'll, see, you'll see the wiggle on it. it, it there's definitely uh, some wiggle going on back and forth. So, uh, Sean and I talked about this before we started filming. We're, we're not going to rate this. We're not going to give you category ratings. And basically, thumbs up. I give it a thumbs up. So, you know, we, we both recommend this, and, and it's, it's definitely great for, you know, someone that you know, just wants to have things tucked away. And, and I was surprised. I mean, it's not as stiff as a gaming rig that's fully built, but again... Or even to, a desk. To, to be able to put it away at night is, is pretty cool for most people's living rooms. Yep. So, again, wheelstandpro.com. You can check that out. And I think next up, we're going to take a... We're going to yeah, do a switch. quick crossfade here. <laughs> we're going to uh, show you the Turtle Beach headphones that we were using for, uh, for these uh, reviews, too. Wanna grab those suckers? Yeah. All right, next up we're going to talk about the uh, headphones that we've been using for this, uh, this shootout. And it's the uh, Turtle Beach Ear Force X4 wireless headphones, mainly for the Xbox 360, uh, but also compatible with the PS3 and actually has become my PC gaming headphone of choice. And yeah, very cool. Uh, that microphone, you can actually take it off too if you're not using it. It, it, it comes right out, un unscrews. Sean's our, uh, our model here. Prop boy. Prop boy. But uh, like I said, wireless, this is the receiver that you can get. You can hook it up via a optical uh, plug or a analog RCA, which right now I'm just using a mini plug, which by the way, I'm using a mini plug on a splitter with a butt kicker. So I was using those headphones with a butt kicker on my, uh, on my PC rig. And they're uh, 5.1 surround. And what do you think of them, man? Uh, these are some interesting headphones. Uh, they're very light. So that was the first thing I noticed. For full-bodied headphones, they're really light. And what's really weird is there's a battery inside of them. So somehow with a battery, they're light. And then beyond that... Two batteries, two little triple A's you got to keep... Because they're wireless, you got to keep them powered. And, and then the other thing is, yeah, no wires. I mean, I've kind of griped about wireless wheels, but wireless headphones, I like the idea of no wire. Yeah, you have to stay in front of the receiver, so that has to be pointed at you when you're, when you're racing. Looks like it's got these little uh, infrared receivers here. Uh, so that's one of the only downfalls you have to be, you know, within direct line of sight of that unit. A little bit of uh, uh, white noise, I guess you could say, a little bit of a hiss, right. low, very low hiss. As soon as you fire a gaming up, you don't hear it, but what a cool surround sound uh, with it. Um, Another feature with it is, sorry, go ahead, why don't you go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, on the topic of the sound, it actually sounds like a room full of speakers. Yeah, I mean, I, I know a lot of headphones make those kind of claims, and I never believe it, but I swear I'm not wearing headphones. It sounds like there are six speakers in the room yep. at, at distance from my ears. It's amazing the way they do it. It's just not a headphone sound. My daughter's uh, boyfriend, Adam, came over here, was uh, running some laps. And he had them on, and he, he, after he was done, he took them off, and he's like, man, I felt like you guys could hear everything that was going on. Like, he felt like the sound was in the whole room. And, yeah. and another thing, they're so light, you forget that they're on your head. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another feature is you can plug um, Xbox controller right into it. So, you know, you can do your, uh, the whole Xbox thing. It, it plugs right in here to the bottom. And it actually gives you separate sound controls for the, uh, for the chat. So you can turn the voice uh, and the game up and down separately, so that's kind of a cool feature. Cool. Uh, it's got a little dial here for sound here and a bass boost feature. Oh, I had the bass boost off. I'm gonna make sure that's turned <laughs> I back I might on. have just, I've been playing Oh, okay, all yeah, Sean fiddles with everything. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, but anyway, uh, no I'm not. But uh, <laughs> it has a dial here for sound uh, and then a power button here too. Actually, you can see, I don't know if you can see it flashing there. I don't know, but anyway, there's flashing light when you're, I when you it. got the sound on. But uh, oh, and you can, when you're not using them, just put them on their little holder. Put them on their holder. That's uh, cool. Retail for about 200 bucks. Ouch. That's a little pricey. Kind of pricey, but I'm imagining because of the wireless. Um, but definitely a quality set of headphones, and you can use them on anything. Xbox, you know, a lot of these cross compatible things. This is another one. And yeah. I'd like to thank Turtle Beach for uh, sending these to us to check them out. And we definitely recommend them. We saw them at Best Buy, as a matter of fact, while we were there the other yeah, day. Yeah, that was cool. Mm -hmm. So get them at Best Buy and all sorts of different places. So that's that. Next up, our last little toy. Are we going to give it a little... Uh... Oh, thumbs up, thumbs down? I'd say I'd give, I'd give it a thumbs up. Yeah. It, it's you know what's a little pricey. pricey. That's about my if only... If you can afford them, thumbs up. If you can't yeah. afford them, then you, you just use some earbuds or something or whatever you're using already. But yeah. 
Cool set of headphones. I, I like them a lot. And yeah, you got to make sure no one walks in between. You know, that was that's really the only downside. I mean, yep. price and that. Other than that, they're amazing. Yeah, I agree. All right, so uh, Fanatic wheel stand next. Why don't we just roll right into it, man? All right. So uh, Fanatic Ren Sport wheel stand. Uh, this thing's compatible with the G25, the Logitech wheels as well, Xbox 360 wheel. As a matter of fact, there's different attachments. Yeah, actually, this is the uh, pedal plate adapter, which is necessary or not necessary, depending on how crazy you're going to get and how much how secure you want it. We were able to, since it's got these big wide plates, we were able to use Velcro on them. So um, that stopper goes for $14.95. And then the shifter plate, there's a whole extra shifter plate that allows you to attach either this or the G25 shifter. That goes for 20 bucks. But the wheel stand itself is uh, $129.95 plus shipping and handling depending on where you're living. So probably about this, it's compatible price-wise yeah. with the, uh, the wheel stand. Under 200 bucks for if you get all the, the accessories. Um, it, uh, this thing, Definitely a little bit more beefier than the wheel stand. It is super heavy, super solid. But it's not as adjustable as the wheel stand. Nope. The, uh, the wheel stand pro, you can't tilt it forward. You, you, you have straight up and down or tilted like this because what's going on here is there's little holes where this mount goes in. And that's why it mounts so firmly. I mean, there's very little wiggle considering how little is actually there. Yeah. And it's because of that, but it's not as adjustable, and we've had emails about this. Is it adjustable? Yeah, same thing here. You got holes to adjust here where this this uh, this knob screws in. Uh, and one thing I recommend, there was a review that some guy did. Uh, give him props. He did a great review of this mm -hmm. stand. You guys might want to check it out. Just look for a Red Sport wheel stand on YouTube. But um, he showed that you have to really make sure that it's in that groove to get it to, to seat. And what you do, man, that thing is not moving anywhere. Yeah, we actually had one where it wiggled a little bit. We kept seeing it. Finally, when you get it in the hole all the way, it stops moving entirely. Yep, uh, so uh, get that at fanatic. Actually, don't get it at fanatic.com. Go to insidesimracing.tv and we have them for sale at our store. Yeah, little button right there, store. Yeah, same price that you can get it for at Fanatic. Uh, we're one of their affiliates and we make a few bucks if you buy one uh, through us. So. Go to our site at InsideSimRacing.tv and uh, just click on store, or look for the Fanatic products and the Wheel Stand Pro is definitely in there. Yeah. So uh, that's it for our, our tools of the trade. Oh, another thing comes with a, um, sorry, back to the Fanatic thing, comes with this basically like an installation poster. Want to hold that there for me? You Sean? got it. You got it. It's like an installation poster for you. It shows you step by step how to do it. So uh, that's, what that, well, that's what it comes with. And the tools that you need, all the hardware to, to hard mount everything. Everything's hard mounted here. Uh, so again, that's uh, fanatic.com, but buy it from our store if you're interested. <laughs> and uh, what do you think? Thumbs up? Oh, that one, yeah, absolutely. I mean, all of these things worked out. I mean, I felt like we were pretty lucky guys. Had we're some spoiled of the when best. it comes, yeah, we're spoiled <laughs> when it comes to this stuff. Um, but you know, we're trying to give you guys the, uh, the best reviews we can, so we want to get the best tools for that, so. There's our uh, tools for the big shootout. All right. Hey, you live for speeders. It's been a while since we had an LFS report. Michael Passingham's back, doing his best at what he does. Check it out. Now it's time for a bit of my own. Mod Squad, but in LFS instead of R Factor. This week, the LFS car sound remix are made by Yamakawa, all the way back in 2006. I only discovered this last month, thanks to Racing Radicals, Spiky Marco D, so thanks to him. It's essentially an outgauge program, meaning it takes live data from Live for Speed and converts it into sound of some sort. It works in addition to the standard LFS sounds. The new sounds include new like blow-off sounds for turbo cars, drive shaft noises, new engine sounds working in conjunction with the standard LFS sounds, and brake squeal, among other things. The program comes with its own standard sounds for you to use, but there's nothing stopping you to making your own .wav files if you're that way inclined. Very good indeed. It's rather complicated to use, I have to say, and very difficult to explain to anyone who isn't familiar with LFS, or anyone who even is familiar with LFS. It's that complicated. Luckily, David Williams, he's been mentioned a lot lately, hasn't he, in my uh, other reports. Oh well, he's here, uh, and he has made his own sound pack for CSR, this car sound remixer, and it's exceptionally good. In fact, it's so good, I hate it, because it's making me drive a lot slower. Reason? 
I have to rev really highly. I have to rev right up, right past the red line because it sounds so good, and I can't stop myself. But I'll have to learn. LFS sound modifications can be made in Lift for Speed by by itself uh, using the Shift A menu by sliding sliders back and forth to change different options. This is good, but CSR is a lot more effective in doing so, and it has some better sounds, I'd say. So once you've downloaded the LFS Car Sound Remixer, this is the small window that you'll see first of all. Basically, you have to click on the edit button to start editing, obviously. Then you select a car from this list. Nice music going on there. I'm going to select the XRT because it demonstrates a lot of the sounds that you can use. So first of all, you'll be greeted by this very daunting screen. Very daunting indeed. Just have a look. It's got the engine, drivetrain shift and backfire, turbo and other sounds. So in the engine department, you basically have different frequencies for different revs going up or down. And basically dragging this up gives you, a, shows you what it will sound like at different revs. Uh, and you change the numbers in these boxes to change the pitch of the sound and the volume, etc. You can also change where the actual sounds come in. Drivetrain. Well, there are some nice whining drivetrain noises you can have for different cars. This particular sound pack isn't using them at this moment, but you can do that if you want. Shift and backfire. Basically, you've got different sounds for shifting up and down. You can listen to them by clicking on each little button. And also backfire. Backfire. I really like this one. So basically when you're off the throttle and slowing down quite quickly, you will get some backfire every so often, like so. Finally, you have turbo sounds. So when your turbocharger is on and is currently active, you'll hear this sound. And when it's blowing off, like when you go off the throttle and start braking, you'll get that sound. Brake squeal is one of my favourites. It sounds exceptionally good when you're braking, it gets louder as you brake more and quieter as you draw to a stop. Road noise, well that speaks for itself really, and the fuel warning, this is really annoying actually. I mean, it's really useful but really annoying because basically when your fuel gets below whatever level you set, it's currently 2%, it'll beep every so often. And if you're on quite a long track, it'll be beeping quite a few times before you actually get round to the pits to refuel. Or if you're in a qualifying session, you won't want it to beep at all, because you want to be low on fuel for the whole time. Yes, very nice indeed. Then you click on Test Run to take you for a test run, and now I'll show you what it sounds like in relation to what the LFS sounds normally sound like. The next corner will allow you to hear what the backfire sounds like. And the one just coming up will also help you to hear the brake squeal, which sounds excellent, and also some of the blow-off valve. Now, this program does not work when you are outside of the car. I mean, you can hear the sounds, but it doesn't give you the Doppler effect or any kind of volume control, because that is the limitation of outgauge. It only gives the car data and none of the camera data or anything like that, but still, it sounds excellent. Also, you won't hear any of this sound in any of the other cars you're racing against. This is because, again, for the same reasons I just explained, so you'll just hear these standard LFS sounds coming out of any other cars around you. So that's a bit of a whistle-stop tour of the Car Sound Remixer. If you want to find out more about it, go to lfsforum.net and click on the unofficial add-on section. The CSR should be in there on the first page. This is Cole Little asking you to stop by the brand new SRT store. They have everything you could want as a sim racer right there in one place. They have wheels, pedals, shifters, and more. I'm talking about the latest sims, even Race Pro. Sim pods, video cards, they got it all. Just go to InsideSimRacing.tv, click on the store button, or on the banner. And the best thing of all is every purchase helps keep SRT on the air. So don't be a Dario Gangini. Go to the SRT store, get your gear, and be cool. Celebrity voice impersonated. And that's going to take us to part two of the shootout, which I've been eagerly wanting to know what was your guys' final opinion on the video. <laughs> I can't believe you. You tried to pull that with Darren. That's not going to fly. You're going to have to sit here and watch it like everybody else out there. I guess I do then. So here's part two. Okay, back for part two of the uh, big shootout. And... Uh, and yeah, Jessica was relentless in trying to get, uh, <laughs> trying to get our uh, 
our pick here. Just kept poking and prodding. But she pretty she knows by now. But uh, anyway, uh, big category, and this one's probably the one that's the final dagger in, uh, I don't know if I want to say that this early, but you know what, it's not like it's any big secret. Anyway, the final dagger in Gran Turismo's uh, heart uh, damage. Damage. Or lack thereof. Yep. No damage. What do we give damage for Gran Turismo 5? Big goose egg. Yeah, that, I, nothing. I mean, not a scratch on the car. You can't tear anything up on the engine. You know, Casanori himself said they didn't want, he didn't want to put damage in because, you know, it's kind of, of a sacred deal to, to damage these beautiful cars. In a sim race, I mean, it, it definitely, especially online, multiplayer, it is an equalizer, man. Yeah. Forza 2. Yeah. Oh, I blew gearbox, well, motor. Motors motor and gearboxes and taillights being smashed yeah. out. And Glass entirely being smashed cool out. Cool stuff happening. Yeah. Uh, I gave it an 80, Forza. I, I gave it an 85. It was spectacular. It was both visually and physics. Physically, yeah. Uh, it had a great cause and effect. I mean, your car just went to junk on you, and you'd be lucky to bring it home. So, well done. Yep. Next up, tracks. Tracks? Tracks. All right. Uh, well, I, uh, tracks are pretty simple. I mean, it's quantity, quality, the works. And Realistic, yeah. some, uh, some fantasies. For, you know, Gran Turismo, what, there's just a handful of tracks. Cool ones, They're Daytona, spectacular. you know, Oval plus the road course, uh, Fuji, Suzuka, some beautiful, famous circuits. But just a handful, and they're beautifully yeah. rendered. Yeah, and on the replays, I mean, it looks like you're watching TV. Yeah, it does, and Forza 2, Silverstone, uh, Road America, Nordschleife, Sebring, Sebring, uh, some cool fantasy There's tracks. Diamond Head, Copperhead, New York <laughs> City. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that was a cool one. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and, and I liked the physics on the tracks too. Lots of cool bumps, elevation changes in yeah. Forza. Yeah. Uh, I gave it a 85. Forza gave it an 85, and um, 70 for uh, Gran Turismo 5. And I gave Forza an 88, and Gran Turismo a 79. So uh, what do we got next? Multiplayer. And this Multiplayer. one, I mean, this is kind of tricky on the console, and I think it's pretty much a similar tune each time. You know, Xbox holds 12, PlayStation holds 16. Yep. Uh, some games or sims will, you know, do it better, but they both held their own very well in it's terms of It's all going to depend on your connection, yeah. Of the system. Um, Forza, you can do your own, you know, you can do custom races. Gran Turismo, you can't. What'd you give it, buddy? I gave Forza 75, and uh, actually I went backward. I gave Gran Turismo an 80, and Forza 75. 75 for both of them for me. Uh, some, you know, 16 players on Gran Turismo. The ability to create your own races on and on Forza 2. Now, a lot of these things are supposedly going to be changed in Gran Turismo. Damage, uh, the ability to create your own races, stuff like that. Um, so, you know. They come out with a patch, yeah. You know, release some more cars, which they have. They yeah. released the this was the Citroen, right, right, and uh, the Ferrari California, the Lotus. So they've released some new cars. How about some tracks? Yeah, that would be. You know, and be... man, release a track pack, downloadable was... content. I know uh, Forza factor. has. Forza's got some downloadable content. Yeah. So what we got next. Next is AI, AI offline, offline racing. Again, sim racing. This is something I can't wait till somebody does AI real well. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I think games just sort of forget about it. It's there and. In this case, uh, they're both very similar. I, there are things I preferred about each. They are both average, a little better than average maybe, uh, and I gave them both an 85. So. Speaking of AI, I saw a new service called iOpener, and uh, we'll be talking about it here. I've been talking behind the scenes to some of those, those guys, and uh, AI yeah. that may take AI to a whole new level. Check out <laughs> iOpener on the uh, net, you guys. It might be pushing AI. It might not be all AI. Yeah, Forza, I gave them an 85, 80 for Gran Turismo 5 in, in AI. All right, and next it takes us to force feedback, and I believe we also added wheel functionality, yep. and actually these sims will get to it, but that's why. Now, let's talk a little bit about that since we're talking about wheels and, function, and, and force feedback and functionality. We use the 911 Turbo and the, and the uh, G25. G25 was only usable on the PlayStation 3, and this is the wheel for console. And Sean was running this, was running the G25 last night in Gran Turismo, and, and he was just ready to beat the heck out of the force feedback and the physics. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe you're missing out. Let's, put, let's, let's boot up the Porsche wheel. So we, we boot up the Porsche wheel, and he's like, whoa, yeah. this makes it a whole different night game. Yeah. yeah, it's just, 
It there actually, I mean, as you know, it's a very, very uh, real car looking wheel, but again, in the feel, especially with these games that are, you know, rendering great stock or production type cars, it just, it felt right at home and, and nice every- Nice thick grip, it was just really solid, so. Um, and what was cool about Gran Turismo, the use of the six speed and the clutch. Yeah. Can't do it in Forza. Um, so this is another category where Gran Turismo actually got better score for me. Absolutely. Uh, I gave Gran Turismo an 80. Oh, I'm sorry. I actually am backward because I felt that Forza had just a little more balance. So it was very close. I gave uh, Forza an 85 and Gran Turismo an 84. I gave Gran Turismo a 90 and Forza an 85. I, I really like the feel of Gran Turismo uh, with the force feedback, especially with this wheel, like I said. Lots of adjustability. Um, and the six speed with the clutch, I liked having that option to use. Man, tough to do too, man. You have to clutch it and yeah. shift or it won't, go, it won't go into gear for you. And Forza doesn't have that capability yet, so that's why I gave it a little bit better score there. Fair enough. Last but not least, cost. cost. And it's kind of, I mean, at this point you can get it on eBay. I'm sure you can find both of them pretty cheap, but we're just going based on what the original costs were, and I'm sure 40, 50 bucks. Um, and based on the bang for the buck, what you get for the cost of these, yep. of these uh, Calm Sims, you know, uh, console simulations. Yeah, you can almost take all the 11 categories, divide it by the price, and probably come up with our score. I don't know if the math works there. But anyway, with that, I was a little more impressed with what you get for Forza, and I gave it an 85. And Gran Turismo, I went with the 75. Same, uh, oh, no, not same exact store. 85 for me on Forza, 70 for me on uh, Gran Turismo. All right. So that'll do it for our uh, our scores there, and why don't we tell them our over? It's obvious now. Forza is the reigning console simulation champion in our eyes. Yeah. Again, if you disagree, post your comments uh, in our uh, right here on our YouTube page. But uh, Forza definitely won it. And, yeah. and yeah. What, what was your overall score? I went with a well, went with it came out to an 85.66666 for Forza versus a 75.666 for Gran Turismo. And, you know, with that, you know, there are just a couple of little things, though. I mean, overall, it was very close, but you throw big damage numbers in for Gran Turismo, so maybe the next generation, and it could change things. Well, actually, we did. We, uh, uh, threw, we, t we put equal damage scores in to see how close Gran Turismo would get, and it was only about a four-point, oh, yeah. four- or five-point sway between the two yeah. versus... Uh, what did you have? You I had, had a, a 10 point, 10 point difference. almost exactly 10 points, 85 and 75.6. Yeah. Now me, I had a, almost the same exact score on Forza. I had, Forza, I had an 85.4 and a 73.1 in Gran Turismo. And again, throw in some good uh, damage and, and they're going to be, uh, they're going to be right there. Add some more tracks, you know, to uh, Gran Turismo and, yeah. and and Forza, don't think you got off clean. I mean, you better get a cockpit view. I mean, when we're talking doing this for the next version of these two, I mean, I'd like to see all these changes implemented for both. Yeah, and uh, Sean and I have talked about doing the ultimate sim, and, and you know what? Some, some categories from both of these are going to make that, yeah. that uh, ultimate sim that we're going to do. Well, that was uh, a and I, challenge. And, yeah, it was a great challenge, and you know, great tools for this. want to thank Fanatic, Wheelstand Pro, uh, also Turtle Beach, uh, for the use of the headphones during that, uh, and Sony and Xbox, Microsoft, t Turn 10, Polyphony, uh, all of them for, uh, for giving us the tools to put this together. Um, and you know what, like I said, it's, it was basically a racing simulator against a driving simulator, and, and that's what they are. Get some damage in Gran Turismo, man, that thing's just going to be crazy. I can't, yeah. you know what, I can't wait for Forza 3 and Gran Turismo 5, yeah. the final. Yeah. So, Sean Cole and Darren Ganji, see you guys later. All right, guys, that just about does it for today's episode. Hope you really enjoyed the shootout because I did. Finally got to see the guys' opinions on which one of those two games is the best. Yeah, and I, I bet we stirred up all sorts of controversy. And I bet you did. If you want to get involved out there in the debate, you know, make a, a post, a comment to this video, and, and tell us what you think. Maybe yeah, we'd we all love to hear what you guys have to say about which is your favorite game and whether you agree or disagree with Sean and Darren's opinion. And subscribe. Yeah, be sure to subscribe. Always subscribe. Tell your friends the works. You know, we, we teased this wheel for quite a while now. As you can see, we finally have it. We're starting to beat it up already, and mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna, you can look forward to hearing about more about this wheel real soon. Stay tuned for our, our one of the future episodes for our review on this wheel. And that's going to wrap it up for episode 39. For Sean and Darren, I'm Jessica Lopez. The checker flag is out, and so are we.
Testies. <laughs> Testies. <laughs> <laughs> Twad. <laughs> Testies. <laughs> all of we. All, all of, of us. We? All of we. <laughs> all of we. The whole we are out. <laughs> we are rolling. Let's just start. Let's just give the whole. Let's just start from the beginning. Okay. We're rolling. 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 Rolling on a river. Don't say that. Don't, don't make any, any noise. Okay. During the shootout, they were using the rent store. Rent store. Rent sport. Hey, you live for speeders. It's been a while since we had a rep uh, blah, 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 blah. 